Hey everybody, I'm Psychroclasm, and my favorite game of all time is Spyro the Dragon. Now, I know that's about a billion other people's favorite game, but hear me out. So, I'm not allowed to use any kind of copyrighted media, previews, videos, anything like that to make my point, so you're going to have to close your eyes and imagine along with me. Close them. Alright, so the year is 1998. John Glenn has returned to space. The unemployment rate is at its lowest since the 1970s. Animal Kingdom opens for the first time at Walt... I'm seven, I don't know anything. But there's this commercial on TV. There's a sheep on a New York City sidewalk, and I want you to picture this. He's standing on two legs, he's got a picket sign. Oh, and most of his body is covered in severe burns. And this is not like a CGI thing. This is like a full-on practical effects puppet. And he's screaming, boycott Spyro! Boycott Spyro! I don't know what boycott means, so I don't know he's protesting. But not only are the people on this sidewalk not listening to him, they're staring at him with these hungry eyes, imagining him as a rack of lamb, and they're prodding him occasionally with forks. <laughs> and it's not like they picked up like plastic forks from a hot dog stand. It's, it's metal forks. They have been carrying these around. They brought these from home. So this 30 second commercial contains four seconds of gameplay footage. One section for each scene. The first one is this little purple dragon flaming a guy who's showing him his butt through a hole in his pants. The second one is the same dragon burning a flock of sheep for no apparent reason. The third one is the dragon flying around, lighting lighthouses, being useful to society. <laughs> and the fourth one is the dragon flaming this buzzard, blows all of its feathers off. And then you see another guy, like, in the background, using another buzzard, like, swinging it around his head, like he's about to use it as a melee weapon. So, <laughs> this commercial is about 28 seconds of animal abuse, one second of a dragon being useful to society, and one second of butt. And it hooked me. Legos, Connects, Power Rangers? Didn't matter. It was all about Spyro. I begged and begged. And Christmas 1998, I got a PlayStation and Spyro. I'd been to arcades before, but I'd never had my own thing. Like, there was no Atari, no Sega passed down from parents or cousins or anything like that. Spyro is where it all started for me. And 20 years later, it has still managed to hold its place in my heart. Honestly, 10 of those years were spent trying to actually complete it. And I didn't even realize how special it was at the time, because I eventually got other games, and none of them featured, like, fully voiced and animated conversations between the main character and NPCs. And it's not even just one or two. It's 80-ish dragons throughout the game, plus Nasty Nork. And sure, some of them only say, thank you for releasing me, and then pff, they're gone. But some of them give you hints to find secret stuff in other worlds. And the enemies had so much going on. They were all Norks, but they all had like different personalities and movesets. Like some of them would like cower from you and like their teeth would be chattering. Some of them would run and duck into tents and Failing that, once you burn their tent away, they just decided as one lacked act of rebellion to show you their butts. And then there were some other ones that were dressed as Rambo that had machine guns. And the level designs were just as varied. It, it was fantastic because there, there was like a whole hidden level in the first world. And the only way you could know about it was this grossly inadequate hint from a dragon you rescue three worlds later. Like, we didn't have a computer or the internet and I probably wouldn't have been allowed to use it if I had had it. But that's just how it was. And there were other, like, hidden collectibles that you just kind of had to hold the entire level in your mind. Because you're, like, doing leaps of faith off of cliffs and doing blind glides and hoping you land where you're supposed to go. And there was one where I don't even know if you could see your destination, like, from any point in the level. You just kind of had to know it was there. And the final level wouldn't unlock until you found 100% of everything. Put it all together with this purple, sassy, flying head button, supercharge, and metal breaking with his face dragon, and you just get something magical that still somehow holds up 20 years later. When I started YouTube, it was the first game I recorded. Um, when Reignited came out, did back-to-back 100% -back streams. And it's, it's just, it's really what started my gaming career. And I'm really grateful that that's where I started, because I started in this place that showed me just how entertaining and captivating 
all of it could be.